Sarvanghietat Brahmayamatma Brahmasoyamatma Chatushpat. All this is verily Brahman. This Atman is Brahman. This Atman has four quarters. Shankaracharya's Tika. Though from the point of view of the mind, a word and the thing signified are the same, still the presentation of the text, the letter Aum is all this, etc., gives greater prominence to the word. The very same thing that was presented through an emphasis on the word is being indicated over again with a stress on the thing signified. So the unity of the name and the nameable may be comprehended. For otherwise, the nameable having been grasped as dependent on the name, the doubt may crop up that the identity of the nameable with the name is to be taken in a secondary sense. The necessity of understanding their identity arises from the fact that once this identity is established, one can eliminate both the name and the nameable by a single effort to realize Brahman that is different from both. And this is what the Upanishad will say in chapter 1, verse 8. The quarters are the letters of Aum, and the letters are the quarters. The Upanishad adverts to the topic in, All this is surely Brahman, etc., Sarva metat, all this that was spoken of as but Aum, is Brahma, Brahman. That Brahman that was indirectly spoken of is being directly and specifically pointed out as Ayamatma Brahma. This self is Brahman. In the text, this self is Brahman the very self that will be presented as divided into four parts is being pointed out as one's innermost self by the word I am. This accompanied by a gesture of the hand to the area of the heart. Sa I am Atma. That self that is such, that is signified by Aum and exists as the higher and lower Brahman, is Chatushpat, possessed of four quarters. As Turiya, the fourth, is realized by successively merging the earlier three, starting from Vishwa. The word Pada in the text is derived in the instrumental sense of that by which something is attained. Whereas in the case of Turiya, the word Pada is derived in the objective sense of that which is achieved. Namaste. Your beautiful rainy morning here in Sri Lanka. <laughs> anyway, this passage, and especially the Tika, require a bit of explanation. Uh, I guess you notice. Anyway, <laughs> the previous verse, the first verse, emphasized the word Aum. This verse emphasizes the meaning or the object or the reference of that word, which is the whole perceptic world. In other words, everything that we perceive, whether it's sense object or whether it's a supersensuous transcendent object, if it's perceived as different from oneself, that's part of Aum, or that is Aum, identical with Aum. And then he clarifies, he says, the reason why we are identifying Aum with its references is so that in meditation, we can remove both of them with one effort. See? In other words, if Aum comes to mean everything that I perceive, everything that I am conscious of, 
It's a symbol, right? Every word is a symbol. But on the mental platform, we make it equal to the things it represents, which is basically the inferior Brahman, Shakti, the world, the manifestation, the creation, what is. And then in meditation, by linking these two, we can remove all of them with one and the same effort. Why do we want to do that? Well, neti neti. Neti neti, baby. <laughs> this is how we reach Brahma. By a process of elimination. This is not it. This is not it. This is not it. And finally, Aum is not it. Either. And so, we come to the superior Brahma, because that's the only thing that's left. And that is the self, with a capital S, Atman. Atman means myself, yourself, the self of that tree over there, the self of every sentient creature, and even the insentient matter. Both moving and non-moving existences. That is the superior Brahman. Pure awareness, unconditioned by an object. See, in ordinary consciousness, the object conditions the consciousness. That's why we talk about Jagrat, Svapna, and Sushupti as being three different things. Actually, they're the same thing. <laughs> consciousness, but with different objects. Jagrat is called waking consciousness because its objects are the things of the world. Now, in Mandukya Upanishad, this is called Vaishvanara, and its location is within the eye. Svapna consciousness is dreaming, and its object is the mind and thoughts, and this is called Taijasa, or Hiranyagarga. And its location is within the mind. Sushupti, deep sleep, is all about shunyata, emptiness, nothingness. And in Mandukya Upanishad is called pragna, or the unmanifested. And it's located in the space within the heart. Now finally, Turiya, transcendental consciousness, is the inferior Brahman. It's called Turiya, which simply means the fourth. And it's transcendental, so it's beyond location and description. So these are the four quarters of Brahman. They're not exactly quarters in the sense of a direction, you know, or a, a piece, slice of pizza. <laughs> but they're quarters in the sense of this is how Brahman this inferior Brahman gets divided into the individual self and the objects of consciousness. But in reality, ultimately, Turiya is real. Everything else is illusion. So, neti, 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 drop it all. And what are you left with? Superior Brahman. The original Supreme Brahman. And that is the actual object, or the, I shouldn't say object, because it's confused then with consciousness. But the goal of this Upanishad is to help us realize that Supreme Brahman. Because this is the absolute top of self realization. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.